Fungi can produce mushrooms with enough force to break through asphalt. Asphalt. Okay, that's mind-blowing, but what does it have to do with Bitcoin? Well, to the casual observer, most of Bitcoin's life is boring. Months go by with relatively little action. Then, when conditions are just right, Bitcoin explodes into life, growing massively in size and hijacking the consciousness of observers. Price goes to the moon, media is flooded with hyperbole, and DMs from normies flood in. Then, almost as soon as it crescendos, Bitcoin fades away, dying back into obscurity as casual participants write it off as a fad, hype, or a failed experiment. Most new users exit the ecosystem. However, a small percentage form new colonies in Bitcoin land. These bear market survivors become new hodlers of last resort. Unsurprisingly, the bear market narrative is driven by surface level activity, or price. This, surprisingly, exactly matches the way fungi reproduces. Fungi exist primarily in their mycelium form, which you can think of as an underground root system connecting trees and plants. Humans wouldn't even know mycelium exists, as it stays quiet underground for the majority of its life. However, when fungi sense that conditions are favorable, temperature, humidity, etc., it sends up a mushroom above ground. These mushrooms are the sexual organs of fungi, essentially phallic spore or seed delivery systems. Before mushrooms break the ground, fungi concentrate energy into a tiny mass of cells underground called pinheads, which persist until the perfect moment. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, mushrooms explode out of the ground, doubling in size each day until reaching maturity. After the mushroom is fully mature, it crescendos with the release of millions of spores, or mushroom seeds, before quickly decomposing back into the ground. The mushroom only lives for a few triumphant days, and most spores perish before infancy, exactly like the new Bitcoin users during a hype cycle. However, a small percentage of the spores will travel nearby and form new fungal colonies. These new colonies might stay underground for several years before the reproductive cycle continues again. The same happens with Bitcoin. Fungi fact. Spores are lighter than air, which makes travel easy. Theoretically, spores could catch an updraft and leave Earth's orbit. Luckily, they're on a short list of biological matter capable of surviving the cold vacuum and radiation of space. Panspermia, anyone? Bitcoin detractors mistake the hype cycle, or mushroom, for the big picture, or mycelial network. Amnesiac pundits proudly pile on proclaiming Bitcoin has perished for the 408th time. Fiat maximalists take victory laps on Twitter by posting 12-month charts. The tractors gather to roast the proverbial Bitcoin mushroom while patting each other on the back. While everyone was focused on gold and silver, Bitcoin dropped another 40%, traded below $58. April 16th, 2013. Correction, Rubini hasn't been mocking Bitcoin since it was $600. He's been mocking it since it was $58. Imagine how short your attention span must be and how strong your self-delusion to gloat with vindication during every dip from $58 to $7,000. However, to be fair, Bitcoin is complicated. Many crypto people still think Bitcoin is MySpace and RippleCoin is the standard. Unsurprisingly, most journalists don't grasp what's going on. Imagine being assigned the Bitcoin beat as a well-intentioned run-of-the-mill journalist. While the mushroom has died, or recent hype cycle, the mycelium, or Bitcoin, is thriving underground. Like a mushroom past its prime, Bitcoin exuberance decays and the price plummets. Bear markets shake out weak hands. Hedge funds fail. ICOs give back investor money. Or worse, projects fail and some charlatans get exposed. However, hodlers, new and old, collectively go underground and quietly make Bitcoin better. Building, learning, and forming alliances. Hey guys, I'm Drew. I turn the most important articles on Bitcoin into documentaries so more people can learn from them. This video was based on Bitcoin is the Mycelium of Money by Brandon Quidham. This is part two. Subscribe if you want to support this mission. Bitcoin improved dramatically during the 2018-2019 bear market. As time goes on, narratives evolve as Bitcoin continues to reveal itself to curious onlookers. Eventually, the market bottoms. Hodlers cling together like a band of brothers, creating a strong foundation capable of sustaining future growth. Hodlers are the revolutionaries. Dan Held. As hodlers hoard more Bitcoin, the float, or supply actively being traded, is increasingly constrained. 
With a decreasing available supply, each new user puts more upward pressure on the price. As price rises, media shines a spotlight, new users are pulled in, and before long, we're back in another hype cycle. Sometimes, people say, crypto can be a bit culty. This is both true and a net positive. Before we get into Bitcoin's religious tendencies, let's learn from our history with mushrooms. The modern Western world has been inflicted with mycophobia, the irrational fear of fungi. People fear what they do not understand. And let's face it, most people think mushrooms are vegetables. Mushrooms are strange. They represent the life and death cycle of impermanence that humans subconsciously fear. Facing our own mortality is no fun. Better to just avoid it. However, it hasn't always been this way. In fact, humans have had a relationship with mushrooms for a long time. From food, to medicine, to superstitions and religious artifacts. Mushrooms can save your life, kill you, feed you, and even alter your consciousness. Anthropological evidence suggests that humans who partnered with fungi had an evolutionary advantage. As more people understand fungi and Bitcoin, they'll soon realize how important they just might be. The Mazatec culture from present-day Mexico revered the mushroom as sacred. Bitcoin conjures up a similar quasi-religious fervor. Described brilliantly by Yuval Noah Harari, Homo sapiens are uniquely capable of cooperating flexibly in large numbers. This enables us to collectively agree on abstract concepts such as nations, gods, and money. Just as humans formed religious cults around the mushroom, one way to describe Bitcoin is a neo-money religious movement. The mystery of Satoshi created a strong foundation enabling emergent religious tendencies. Bitcoin was created through immaculate conception by a mythical character, Satoshi, who later sacrificed himself for the greater good. The cult of Satoshi inspires some fanatics to dedicate their lives to promoting the good word. Not all Bitcoiners fall into the same religious sect. Some scholars cling to the ancient religious text or white paper, while others interpret Satoshi's vision through his early forum posts. Disagreements about priorities, evidenced by the scaling debates, have led to hard forks and fractured congregations. Not unlike Martin Luther fracturing the Catholic Church by pinning the 95 theses on the church door in 1517. Roger Ver was known as Bitcoin Jesus from his early days spreading the good word by gifting Satoshis to fiat-afflicted restaurateurs. Messianic figures like Fake Toshi or Craig Wright spring up claiming to be the real Satoshi Nakamoto. Fake Toshi, the fundamentalist, brands his sacrament as Satoshi's vision, the one true Bitcoin as laid out in the Bible or white paper. Never mind how incomplete or how many errors are found in the white paper, Fake Doshi claims his fork of a fork is the real Satoshi's vision. Even if Fake Toshi's fork was closest to Satoshi's original vision, it wasn't, does it even matter? The answer is no. The essence of Bitcoin is intimately tied to the ever-evolving social consensus surrounding the protocol. Bitcoin's social contract coalesces around a few simple rules. These agreed upon rules, or a shelling point, are then ratified in the Bitcoin protocol automating social consensus. The rules of Bitcoin. One, no confiscations. Two, no censorship. Three, no inflation. Four, anyone can verify rules one to three. Let's use the great scaling debate as an example. One group, Bitcoin Cash, believed we should focus on cheap payments at the expense of decentralization, while the other, Bitcoin, believe we need to prioritize decentralization on the base layer and scale payments off-chain. As a competing religious sect in a free market, the Bitcoin Cash gang was free to fork the Bitcoin code and test their hypothesis. Years later, it's clear that the social consensus surrounding Bitcoin doesn't agree with the Bitcoin Cash approach, as the market doesn't value Bitcoin Cash or any other fork spawn. Detractors of Bitcoin might then say, forking Bitcoin code inflates supply. However, that's like saying when Zimbabwe prints more money, it devalues the US dollar. In the case of the failed Bitcoin cash fork, they copied the code, in this case, the Bitcoin protocol, but failed to mobilize the people or social layer, resulting in an asset with relatively minimal value. A prime example of Bitcoin resisting corruption from bad actors by requiring social consensus in order to change the network. In other words, Bitcoin replaces social assumptions with mathematical assumptions. We're witnessing a new scarce commodity being monetized in real time. No living person has witnessed such a phenomenon. 
In order to actually pull this off, the collective consciousness of this planet will need to change. Convincing people that money isn't green paper and it doesn't need to come from our government will take time. In order to overcome the inevitable adversity required to create a new global reserve currency, it just might require some religious zeal. As each new disciple converts to the cult of Satoshi, the chances of hyper-Bitcoinization increase. That being said, there are risks of over-politicizing Bitcoin. Some factions of the community portray Bitcoin as a club for Austrian economists who only eat meat that they personally shot with one of their many guns. While those things are well and fine, they are not prerequisites for being a Bitcoiner. Let's not entangle the two at the cost of repelling prospective Bitcoiners. Money is the ultimate network effect. Its value is determined by the number of people you can interact with. In Bitcoin, not only does it capture its user's imagination in a religious sense, but there are also financial incentives to recruit new members into the congregation. With each new user that buys Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin directionally increases, benefiting previous hodlers. Then that new user is incentivized to convert their friends, who then convert their friends, and the cycle continues. As the price increases, so do the incentives to improve security, as evidenced by the difficulty adjustment, one of Satoshi's most brilliant contributions. Price increases, so mining becomes more profitable, so more miners contribute hash power, so better security makes Bitcoin more valuable. If the bear market blues make you frown, just look underground. There are countless developments to be optimistic about. Broke, digital gold. Woke, digital slime mold. The Bitcoin fungus is quietly spreading underground. With each passing day, Bitcoin is eating more fiat, becoming more robust, more decentralized, and more lindy. Even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise. Hey guys, Drew again. This is part 2 of this series, so subscribe if you want to see part 3 when it comes out. And check out part 1 here.